Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua FM, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry. In the news tonight, community still shocked by bus accident. Two tropical cyclones expected for Fiji. And children involved in evangelism work a concern. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. The tragic bus accident in Lakena Nausori on Wednesday is continuing to haunt residents. The bus tumbled down the hill and flipped over, claiming the lives of two school students and injuring several others. Now, two days after the fatal crash, people residing in the area are still very much in shock. Kritika Kumar reports. An eyewitness who was at the scene on Wednesday says that he and his wife ran outside when they heard a loud noise. When the accident happened, my wife yelled to me, Willie, the bus is under you. So we, uh, we both ran outside. Eh? Uh, our house is just a uh, few meters from this house. Nemani adds it was heartbreaking to see two kids lying motionless in the bus. By the time we reached this house, we saw the kids uh, run. Eh? They came from the bus. The, the one who, uh, who was arrived. Eh? And uh, I saw two kids lying dead on the bus. So from that moment, uh, you know, any parents when they come and see, only tears can come. Eh? Ratu Nemani and his family also counting their lucky stars. Lucky none of them uh, died because they are on the kitchen. And you can see the kitchen from here that uh, some... Uh, part of the bus inside the kitchen. They damaged the, the stove and their kitchen and especially the house. The house has been moved by the bus. For many members of the community, this is the first time for such an accident to occur in that area. The place was crowded with police and other people. It came as a shock because it's the first time we experienced a tragic incident. Sad thing is that the victims are the kids. The bus driver involved in the tragic road accident has been questioned by police and remains in custody. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fiji Meteorological Service expects two tropical cyclones to affect Fiji between November 2019 and April 2020. With the release of its forecast for the upcoming cyclone season, the Met Office says that the two cyclones, one may reach three or stronger. Up to eight tropical cyclones are expected to occur in an area covering from the Solomon Islands to French Polynesia. All communities have been reminded to stay alert and prepared throughout the upcoming cyclone season. The use of children in evangelism during school hours is a concern for the Fiji Council of Churches. President Reverend Dr. Tevita Mbani Vanua says this tops their agenda and they're looking for ways to address the issue. Sainian Mboilo reports. The Fiji Council of Churches has noted an increase in the number of children involved in church activities during school hours and late at night. We are indeed very sad that uh, people find it right to use children in their school hours to uh, do these things. Children, uh, in what we believe, are not really uh, or fully aware of what is going on. And to be used uh, like that, it's, it's not good. The FCC has made a plea to churches using children to stop. And let the children be children and let them uh, enjoy their, their educational time. Otherwise, they'll be left out. Of, of the whole thing that uh, government and churches and everybody is trying to build up a Fiji where these things, uh, uh, you know, uh, get help. Save the Children Fiji says it's crucial to monitor the activities our children are involved in. We would really encourage parents to, you know, monitor and supervise their children. And if the churches are engaging children to after hours, you know, they, they need to get consent from the parents to be able to do so. so. We would definitely not support, you know, children if they are, you know, spending a lot of time which affects 
their education activities. The Fiji Council of Churches is working with the government and other relevant agencies to help address the matter. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Fiji for the first time will chair the International Monetary Fund and World Bank's annual meeting in Washington, D.C. next week. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayum is leading a delegation to Washington, D.C. as the annual meeting starts on Monday. Pranita Prakash reports. The week-long meeting will provide a platform for leaders to discuss the emerging economies and risk of trade wars on small island countries. As many of the small states also have you know, uh, face a, a number of issues. Uh, for example, some of them face issues um, directly as a result of climate change. You would have seen, for example, Barbados, where the entire country got almost wiped off. Uh, still a thousand people are missing. So uh, in terms of their ability to access finance, to do the rebuilding, you know, what price will they be able to access that finance? These are some very sort of, you know, pertinent issues. As the elected chair of the Small States Forum, Issues affecting small island developing states will also be discussed. Uh, it is the uh, ability to be able to address that at a world forum and what type of measures we can take as a global citizen, as global citizens, to mitigate those risks and of course to be able to realize how it will affect us and what steps we can take, preventative steps we can take to be able to buffer ourselves from those risks. Several key ministers responsible for the economy and finance Governors of the central bank are expected to be part of the meeting. Fiji's delegation will include Economy Ministry's Permanent Secretary Makireta Konrote and Reserve Bank Governor Ari Falip. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. New Zealand resident Mohammed Rahish Isuf, charged in the murder of Anandi family, applied for bail in the Lautoka High Court this morning. Isuf has been in remand since September. The state asked for seven days to respond to the bail application and sought 14 days to file information following the disclosures served today. It's alleged that sometime on the 25th or 26th of August, Isuf murdered carpenter Nirmal Kumar, his 54-year-old wife Usha Devi, their 34-year-old daughter Nileshni Kajal and her two daughters, 11-year-old Sana and 8-year-old Samara. The bodies of the Lenga Lenga family were discovered in the Nandi Nasori highlands. A one-year-old baby was found crawling at the scene. Isuf is further remanded in custody and the matter has been adjourned to October 25th. Up ahead, police beef up operations for festive season and cancer survivor shares emotional journey. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Police have noted that the public is now more vigilant and enjoying themselves responsibly following regular night operations by the force. They've stepped up their operations around the country, hoping everyone remains on the right side of the law as we head into the festive season. Apenisa Wangarindovo reports. The police have commended people for adhering to their public advisories. Uh, they've actually taken on board uh, the, the, plea, the, the plea that we had been making about you know, enjoying themselves responsibly because uh, we've been arresting people for being drunk and disorderly or loitering around in town for no reason. And I think that has actually been taken seriously and we've seen also a change in, the, in, in members of the public, the attitude where they just finish and then they clear off from the, uh, the city area. So it's actually made our work a lot easier as well. Some people have mixed reactions to the operations carried out by police. There are very few police in the streets at night and uh, you can hardly see any of them in the daytime. I, I don't know where they're working uh, at the moment. I think police presence are high on streets and I think uh, people are more safer now. The police are also encouraging people to report any suspicious and possibly criminal activity. Apenisa Ongardovu, FBC News. Former lawyer Shazran Abdul Latif has filed for constitutional redress in the High Court. The case has been filed against the Attorney General's Office, the Director of Public Prosecution and the Suva Remand Center. Latif, representing himself in court, said he is frustrated as he has been in custody for 10 weeks. 
The defense has been given 14 days to respond to his application. The former lawyer was allegedly found with a white substance weighing 0 0.063 grams, which later tested positive for methamphetamine and dried leaves that tested positive for marijuana on August 14th at his residence in Nailuva Road. The accused has been further remanded and the case will be recalled on October 25th. Women should not wait if they experience any unusual changes in their breasts. This is serious advice comes from 61-year-old cancer survivor Teresia Tokona, who was recently diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. Tokona says the love and support from her family members made her conquer the battle and become a strong advocate of early detection. To sign Anunga with the story. Prevention is better than cure, best describes this brave woman who managed to conquer breast cancer. The, the first thing that uh, I saw was the blood that was coming up from my, from my nipples and I had to go to, for massaging and when they massaged this thing, I had the wound and it was open. I had to go to Wailio Health Centre for dressing. I thought it was just a boy. didn't know that this is cancer. Tokona says spending time with loved ones while suffering motivated her to reach for that light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm thankful for my husband who is there with me every time and every minute and every hour for him to share with me what I've gone through. Meanwhile, the Fiji Public Trustee today presented a $10,000 check to the Fiji Cancer Society. Society CEO Belinda Chan thanked the board members, management and staff of the Public Trustee for the assistance. Thank you so much for, for, for fundraising. For, for raising the awareness, allowing us to raise awareness, not only in October, but the other 11 months. You know, cancer does not affect people in October. There are currently over 368 patients registered with the Fiji Cancer Society. The society says funds that are normally donated by stakeholders are used for awareness programs, screenings, and to cover the medical and transportation expenses of patients. Chosei Nanuga, FBC News. Fiji Day has a different meaning to each person and six winners of FBC's Fiji Day radio poem competition were given the opportunity to express what Fiji's 49th Independence Day means to them. The winners were part of FBC's free concert Fiji Day celebration yesterday at Alba Park in Suva where they read out their winning poems to the public. Lena Reese has more. 75-year-old Mohammed Youssef is one of the winners of the FBC Fiji Day radio poem competition and to him, our independence is a day of reflection. How can we forget the sacrifices of our ancestors that are connected to you, the rights we have received in this nation? How can we let them go? This is where we were born, were raised, and this is where we will die. You are Mother Earth. How can we separate from you? Oh, my nation of Fiji, we will never leave you and go anywhere. Another winner is 16-year-old Patricia Subaya, who says Fiji Day is all about paying respect to our elders and paving the way forward for all Fijians. With full respect and honor, we thank our past leaders for their sacrifices, which were, are, and will be priceless. To, ro to the role models and their teachings, which give us strength to move on when we are helpless. The competition generated a lot of interest from both the young and old who shared their views on Fiji, celebrating 49 years of independence. Lena Reese, FBC News. And it's business time now with Kelly. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up after the break. LPG prices to drop from next week. And in growing Fiji, rural women contribute to climate resilience. Stay with us. I'm Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house. Leading business Fijians can expect reduced prices for LPG products from next Tuesday 
as said by the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission. A 4.5 kg cylinder of gas will retail at $11.84, down by $1.62. The 12 kg cylinder will cost $31.58, that's a drop of $4.31. A 13 kg cylinder drops in price from $38.88 to $34.21. Bulk gas will range from $2.21 to $2.52 per kg, and auto gas from $1.49 to $1.69. The FCCC says the prices are mainly determined by the drop in international prices since the last quarter. The changes in the price of LPG products are also affected by changes in the international freight rates and the slight weakening of the U.S. dollar against the Fijian dollar. And now looking at the world of money, there's Sinifa from HSC Bank. Looking at the latest in the Forex market, hopes of progress in U.S.-China trade talks and Brexit optimism from Europe pushed back the yen and lifted the British pound and euro early today. Sterling was the biggest mover overnight, jumping to a two-week high versus the dollar and posting its largest daily percentage gain in seven months on hopes of a Brexit resolution. Undermining the U.S. dollar, data yesterday showed U.S. consumer prices unchanged in September. Their underlying inflation retreated, supporting expectations the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates in October. Top U.S. and Chinese negotiators wrapped up a first day of trade talks in more than two months yesterday. The business groups expressed optimism they might be able to ease the trade war and delay a U.S. tariff hike next week. That's all for this week from HFC Bank, Nanaka. Thanks, Sinifa. Here today's exchange rates are set this morning. The Fiji dollar rose against the U.S. greenback, the Kina and the yen, but dropped slightly against the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Chinese yuan and euro. Looking at the commodities market. Oil prices ran back on the rise, approaching $54 per barrel. Gold dropped $10 to 1495 and silver closed down at 1752 in growing Fiji, rural women and girls are on the front lines when natural disasters and agriculture are threatened. Lambasa market vendors under the UN Women's Market for Change program celebrated International Rural, rural Women's Day by highlighting the important role rural, rural women play in building climate resilience. Eleanor Turangavi reports. The world faces an increasingly critical need to act against climate change and the International Rural Women's Day celebration in Lombasa this year highlighted the need to empower women and girls to respond to the impacts of climate change. Rural women and girls, for our population here in Fiji, more than 50% dwell in the rural areas, remote maritime islands. Therefore, to say that today, rural women and girls to build resilience for climate change is most appropriate. According to the UN Women, empowered women have greater climate resilience as they play important roles in adopting low carbon technologies, spreading knowledge about climate change and urging action. Rural women and girls, practice self-awareness. Be aware of your surroundings. Rural women and girls, be mindful of the things that are happening around you. The celebration was marked with various activities and competitions aimed at supporting the capacities of rural women and girls to respond to climate change through agricultural production, food security and natural resource management. Basically through the event today, we want the women to be the change that we want to see, empower them as well. This year's theme is Rural Women and Girls Building Climate Resilience, and the day serves as a reminder that the world's sustainable future is not possible without rural women and girls. Eleanor Turanga View, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Koroi. Thank you, Kelly. Good evening. Ahead in sports. PG7 host warm-up games against Australia Sevens. And five players tested positive for drugs at Courts IDC. This and more coming up.
zangu meria mara mani waya manetu ya sawa au weti kitu kitu ndenandi ya ndo mara taka na waronga na radio fijuana yao asna vatili yao maga monika tondo waronga vale buna ndo mai viti lambasa bula na zangu wa prosa ngarse ngo erkraki ndo televe na waronga na radio fijuana na ndo mai viti na zangu Fiji Airways National 7 side today held a scrimmage session with the Australian 7s team at National Fire Authority 7 side at Albert Park. Coach Gareth Baber says the team uses this session as a build-up towards the Oceania 7s and HSBC World 7 Series. Savewanga with the story. As the 2019 Oceania 7s draws closer, the Fiji 7s are improving from their mistakes at the Oktoberfest 7s. You know, obviously we want to keep pushing the standard, we want to keep using these games to push us on and on to get to that HSBC level. Um, so I'll be using it for that, I'll be using it to obviously have a look at some of those players that can increase the depth of squad that we've got, uh, because obviously it's a big year, it's a big year for HSBC defence and it's a big year for Olympic defence as well. Weber says the new players in the team are providing a challenge for senior players as every man wants his spot in the team. So a real focus on areas of the game is probably not the priority today, it's more about uh, the competition level that you get to play against, uh, how much effort you have to make in that, uh, the conditioning level of the players, they spent a long time in the gym, uh, just giving them a bit of a marker on what they need to do when they go into a game, reminding them I'm playing against a quality opposition like Australia is fantastic for us to do. Meanwhile, Australian 7th coach Tim Walsh says Fiji always gives them the competition and challenge they need to improve their game. We've been working in their off-season and um, working on things that we were exposed last year, so we're really really sort of putting that into practice. Um, but when you play Fiji, you're always going to get physicality, you're always going to get skill, you're always going to get flair. So you just have to be on your game uh, constantly and then be able to adapt to every situation. The Oceania 7th tournament kicks off next Friday. Fiji is pulled with New Zealand, Japan, New Caledonia and New Way. Save Wanga, FBC Sports. The All Blacks have backed the decision to call off their game against Italy due to the threat posed by Japan by Super Typhoon Hagibis. World Rugby yesterday cancelled the All Blacks match and also the England versus France game, while a decision on the Japanese Scotland game will be made on Sunday. Some of the Italian rugby team members were reduced to tears after the cancellation of the game. It comes as reports surface that the All Blacks refuse to play a delayed game. It's the final round of fixtures for season 2019 in the National Rugby Championship, and all the teams still have plenty to play for. Five players in the court's inter-district championship have been tested positive for drugs. The Fiji Football Association has handed suspension letters and fines to these players and their respective association. Fiji FA President Rajesh Patel has issued a stern warning that they will come on down hard on these players. Meanwhile, looking at the senior division of the court's IDC, Navo will face Lami in the first semi-final at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Nandronga will take on Savu Savu in the second semi-final at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. In the Premier Division, Lambasa will face Nandi at 4 p.m., while Mba will take on Suva at 6 p.m. in the semi-finals. The finals of the court's IDC will be at 4 p.m. on Sunday. In today's play of the day, the Green Packers shook the Cowboys as they stormed to a 34-24 win in Week 5 of the NFL. The Packers were untouchable throughout the match. That's it from Sports Tonight. In the weird and the wonderful segment later on, how one fried food can help save our planet. Details coming up. Are you one of those who uses apps for your credit keeping? B60 tells us that credit apps are not a replacement for looking at your full credit report. And Little Miss Sunshine Angie joins us now with the latest in weather.
Hello there and welcome to the weekend. Friday is like a superhero that always arrives in time for some good fun. So, what do you have in mind for the weekend? I suppose some good chilling time with the family. Now, in the west, it was a spate of good weather with high humidity. Eastwards from Pakhaba to Suva, the day was clear with no sign of rain. And up north, the same weather pattern followed. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.20 tonight, with high tide at 5.26. Sunrise will be at 5.40. For tomorrow, Saturday is a quick to disappear, so make the most of it while it's nice and bright. Oh, Diwali cleaning maybe? Tomorrow's stems, Bao will be the warmest at 33 degrees. Other centers will follow suit in the low 30s. And looking further on to Sunday, we may come across a shower or two, but otherwise, it should be a happy, jolly weekend. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked Should Semi Randrandra be considered for Player of the Year award? I think he's really up there with the world-class players and he should be a nominee for the World Rugby Player of the Year because the last two games against Georgia and uh, Wales, he really, uh, he was really amazing with how he played. I think he should be given one. When we watch Ronaldo play, it is on a different level. I think he should be given an award for his excellent performance. I think he deserves to be the player of the year. I believe he should uh, take the award as he has been playing from the rugby league and union and is uh, an experienced player as well. It would be good if somebody be given to the, one of the Pacific Island players. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, most of us like to indulge in fried food. Well, you will be surprised that a certain fried food could help our planet. Recapping the main stories for tonight, community still shocked by bus accident, two tropical cyclones expected for Fiji, and children involved in evangelism work a concern. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking this week, do you think the quality of meat sold in shops and supermarkets should be reviewed? Visit the FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day with Fijians celebrating Fiji Day yesterday, Hundreds turned up at Albert Park to be part of the free FBC concert. People of all walks of life and age were part of this. Absolutely wonderful to see. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, via Facebook page FBC News or our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. You can also hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Today FM, Today FM rocks. I'm Linda Form. I started at Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asinate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.